people around here, when you think of a farmer, it's uh, of the children's fable, old MacDonald had a farm and had, you know, chickens and pigs and cows. That's not, that's not the way farming is anymore. It's, it's a strictly a business. And if uh, you, have to, you have to adapt and change, and, and biotechnology is going to play a huge role into the future in, in my ability to stay here and make a living. Now you've got companies that are putting foreign genes into animals and fish that are changing the crops of the world fundamentally at the genetic level and polluting you know, the planet with this genetic pollution. And once again, only a few scientists, corporations, and government regulators are making the decision. There's no democratic decision making. These technologies are legislation. They're going to affect our lives more than any law passed by any legislature around the world. Seeds are the first link in the food chain and food has always been used as a weapon by those who would like to have the ultimate weapon in their hands. But even more fundamental than food is controlling the beginning of the food supply which is the seed itself. That is the reason you have the most powerful country of the world, the US, and its corporations like Monsanto, like Delta and Pine, playing with things like Terminator seed. It is an attempt to control the world. It is part of controlling the world by terminating its freedom to evolve in its own track, trajectories and its own parts. We are concerned about what we call genetic pollution and we are concerned about making everybody understand that genetic pollution is something totally different from the chemical pollutions we have been stupid enough to initiate uh, over the past uh, 50 years or so. Because chemicals never replicate themselves. Uh, even, a, a, even a huge chemical pollution will over time get smaller. While for DNA, it may be the other way around because DNA is self-replicating in principle. So a small pollution may replicate itself to become a huge pollution. more canola we got here, Martin. That's sprouted. Well, I haven't seen a lot. Oh, there's one. I just stepped over this one. Another. See, there's a couple. Yep, here we are. Here but again. see, if you could have worked it, it would have put it in the moisture. It's I am organic, certified organic. We, the, the wife and I, we switched. We've been certified for, for since 2000. And uh, it's been doing very well for us. I mean, the certification is probably, switching to organic farming now is probably what has saved our farm over the conventional, eh? If we'd have been conventional farming, we wouldn't be here anymore. This is all canola, and look at it, you know, it's just about as thicker than the lawn as you get to the edge of the field, eh? So it just shows the amount of seed that's been blown by the wind. Here is the pure evidence of, of what can happen in a situation like ours. Here is the plant that blew across. The seeds, with, with yeah, the, the plant, shell, okay. the, the, the plant is all shelled out. You see there's no pods left on that plant, but look at the crop that is growing here. This is, and this is a crop that was not seeded, it blew in. It blew in here in September, as Martin explained, and now it's germinated. It is a full-blown, healthy GMO canola plant. 
growing on organic land. We had a strong wind and, and the whole plant, like he had it cut into swaths and they were laying out there and when the wind comes up and it just picked the whole plant up and blew it over here into my field. And uh, what I was trying to get mo them to do was confirm that it was their product and, and get it picked off so the seeds wouldn't be left on my property. But now that it's still here, like I say, a big chunk of the seeds are already shelled out and laying on the ground. You can see when I blew on it how light they are. They just, they just see how they move? Just like that, the seeds, and they, so the wind blows them every which way. As spring runoff comes, some of these pods, and this one here is all shelled out too, but some of these plants that still have pods on, those seeds will drift during the winter and carry, and, and they can go a half mile, they can go a mile. This is my life here on the line right now. You know, uh, switching to organic saved me. Now I'm back in the commercial market again, unless something, you know, and, and it's my lifeline that's on the line. In the early 90s, the chemical multi Monsanto began developing genetic technology for plants. It made useful plants, such as canola and soya, resistant to the company's own pesticide, Roundup. Roundup kills every plant, without exception. Only the organically modified canola survives. In this way, Monsanto sells the farmers not only the patented seeds, but also the chemicals to match. Roundup spray is the most frequently sold pesticide in the world. However, there are also farmers who have had dealings with Monsanto against their own will. Probably the most famous one is Percy Schmeisser from Canada. There was one other reason too that we stood up to Monsanto, was the fact that they had destroyed what my wife and I had developed over 50 years of research and development canola seeds that were resistant to, to various diseases we had on the prairies. They destroyed what we developed. And I'm sure that if, if I would do that Monsanto, I would be thrown in jail. But they can come on to a farmer or pollute, contaminate a farmer's field, and destroy what he has worked on, and get a lawsuit on top of it. Percy Schmeiser operates a 650 hectare farm which his grandparents, immigrants from Bavaria and Austria, cultivated 100 years ago. In 1996, Monsanto introduced its genetically modified canola to Canada. A heavy storm during harvest time blew it onto Percy Schmeiser's fields. In August 1998, he was sued for illegally cultivating patented seeds from Monsanto. Two courts sentenced him to pay damages to Monsanto of roughly $100,000. But refusing to be intimidated by the chemical giant, he took the case as far as the Canadian Supreme Court. The court made a distinction. On the one hand, as the court made expressly clear, Schmeisser had infringed Monsanto's patent because he had actively cultivated Roundup Ready Canola and was thus no longer an impartial onlooker. On the other hand, the court decided that Schmeisser did not have to pay damages to Monsanto because he had not enriched himself by means of the genetic canola in his grain. Percy Schmeisser is now contemplating a countersuit against the global group on the grounds of environmental contamination, destruction of seeds and defamation.